The United States has started sending its first shipment of surplus COVID-19 vaccine doses abroad. The United States for the first time spelled out how it would share its wealth of vaccines as part of, of the world's struggling uh, to get shots in their arms. Now, the Biden administration has previously said it would share 80 million doses by the end of June. The U.S. has contracted with uh, has contracts 400 of uh, more, hundreds of millions more vaccines doses that it could possibly use. And this is a move by Biden's administration to attempt to exert global leadership after months of pressure from global health organizations. Now, the remaining doses will go to countries that have made their case to the White House, including nations such as India, that have seen surges in, in, in cases, also places such as Gaza, which is grappling to rebuild from recent fighting in neighboring countries such as Canada and Mexico. In accordance with the administration's framework, the White House announced approximate locations for the first 25 million doses that it will ship. 6 million to South and Central America, 7 million to Asia, 5 million to Africa, and 6 million to Canada, Mexico, South Korea, the occupied West Bank, Gaza, Ukraine, Kosovo, Haiti, Georgia, Egypt, Jordan, Iraq, and Yemen, as well as UN frontline workers. Now, joining us via Zoom is Dr. Kwame Amponsanchan, who's a programs manager for the Extended Immunization Program of the Ghana Education, uh, Ghana Health Service, I beg your pardon. Uh, good afternoon, thanks for your time. First of all, I want to find out the status of the second phase of vaccination. How are we doing currently? Yeah, good afternoon, and thank you very much. Um, yes, um, you will recall that from the 19th of May, we started the second dose of AstraZeneca vaccine for those who had received the first dose from the 1st to the 9th of March. Mm. Uh, we gave ourselves approximately a week plus a couple of days for mop-up. And so far, we are done with that aspect of it. And uh, I would say that, yes, largely, we have been very, very successful in meeting the targets that we set for ourselves. Okay. Now, the U.S. says it is shipping some 5 million doses to Africa. Uh, I want to find out from you, are we going via the same route that is a COVAX facility or there's another way in which we're going to acquire these vaccines, such as uh, in the cases where uh, the statement said the, the, the White House would give some of these vaccines to countries that make their case. Is Ghana making their case to acquire some of these vaccines? Well, the case making usually comes from the high level, and I believe it's been done. Even before the US announcement of this, I knew that the high level the Minister of Health and uh, the Director General were uh, doing quite a number of bilaterals mm. uh, with that. And so, even before this announcement that we all saw or we all heard, there, there were bilateral arrangements going on. I do not know the specifics as of now. Okay. Now, uh, which uh, type of vaccines would we uh, be receiving? Is it Moderna, Pfizer, or AstraZeneca? Do you have that information? Well, uh, for, us, for, for us, as far as we are concerned, you remember in our plan, we made allowances for all kinds of vaccines once they are approved by the WHO and, of course, the Food and Drugs Authority. So far, we have only two. So I can only be confident about the two. That is AstraZeneca and uh, the, the Sputnik, Sputnik V. Mm. All right, uh, Dr. Chanu, now there's, there's some concerns about uh, individuals who've taken both shots of the, the vaccines, that are they supposed to continue uh, wearing their nose mask in public or they are now, in quotes, immune to the virus? What, 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 is, what plans are in place as to, uh, so for example, someone has been vaccinated, taken both shots, are they, are they allowed to um, be out in public without a nose mask? Uh, definitely not. Let me, ex let me explain to you what, what, what the issues are. You see, once somebody gets a vaccine, first of all, let's assume that the person gets protected. It is not all, I mean, not, there's no vaccine that is 100% efficacious. But of course, we know that vaccines do work. But once you get a vaccine and you are, you, are, you, you are protected, it doesn't mean that 
the rest of the people are protected. So first of all, you may get an infection. Nothing will happen to you, but you could pass on to somebody. But and the, that argu the argument that, that they make is that in, in the United States, for example, immunized individuals are allowed to uh, uh, not wear their nose mask in, in, in a number of groups. So which is why they're also claiming that so long as they've taken uh, both shots of the vaccine, then why do I need my nose mask? So that is why I was explaining to you, if you could allow me to make the point, I think you would probably understand it. Please what ahead. I was saying is that first, no vaccine is 100% efficacious. So you may give it to 100 people, maybe up to 80 or maybe up to 90, 95% would be protected. That mm -hmm. is the first thing. You have 5% of people who may not be protected. The second issue is that you can have a vaccine and get an infection. That is not the same as getting a disease. They are two mm -hmm. different things. You could have an infection nothing happens to you, but you can transmit that infection to somebody who is unvaccinated. And so you pose a danger to that person who is unvaccinated. I remember we have only vaccinated approximately 5% of our people, let's say for about 7 to 8% of adults mm. uh, for the, with the first dose. And so we have a chunk of people who are not yet vaccinated. And therefore, they still stand a chance of getting the infection and going down with the disease because they are not vaccinated. Mm. So granted you are vaccinated, it doesn't mean that you have the freedom to live your life the way you want because mm. you then pose a danger to other people. And that is why it is important that even after vaccination, we put on the nose mask, we still maintain the protocols of physical distancing and of course the hand hygiene, which involves hand washing with soap and the running water and of course, in the absence of that, you use a hand sanitizer. Right, the second part is that we need to get a critical mass of people vaccinated, approximately 66, 70%, so that we get what we call the community uh, protection or herd immunity. Mm. In other words, if you had a large number of people vaccinated, then the transmission of the virus becomes limited. Okay. And so the people who are not vaccinated will then be protected. Not until we reach that stage, we would advise that we continue with the protocols. Even that one, when we read the, I think the policy will come out. Okay. And so it's just premature to say that when you are vaccinated, you don't have okay. to wear uh, your nose mask. We need to abide by the rules. All right. Many thanks for your time, of Dr. Amponsachiano is with the Ghana Health Service and the Programs Manager for the Extended Program on Immunization. Now